guys and welcome back to my channel. So long time, really, really long time, no see. Uh, sorry for not uploading uh, for quite some time. It's because I have been busy adapting to my new schedule with my work and also um, I just wanted some me time, some personal time where I'm not burdened to record another video and I'm also trying to finish my uh, say my TBR. I'm slowly going there. I haven't finished all of them yet but uh, basically my TBR pile is uh, reducing and uh, I'm actually happy about that. Also I have been uh, spending a lot of time with my friends and my family. Also since my laptop crashed a few months ago and I've sent it for repairs I actually have been very scared to do heavy stuff on it. Yeah, and the laptop was in triage for a week. So uh, the reason why I want to make this video, this is like we are officially stepping into the second half of 2022. I also think that, uh, well, I just want to inform you guys that some of the videos that are going to come after this are recorded really long time ago. Some of them too as early as back in January 2022 so don't be surprised if like uh, the something feels a bit off I think you can tell so yeah it's because they have been recorded quite some time I just haven't had the opportunity to edit them yet uh, this video will cover a bunch of different topics and these times that I haven't been uh, recording anything I've also been uh, doing a lot of other stuff as well and getting interested in a lot of issues and gathering my thoughts on them. So I'm going to start with the hot topic this past week, Malay dramas. There would be uh, some time in a year that I would just feel like watching Malay dramas, both ironically and unironically. They are repetitive. You're not going to get a variety like with K-dramas. You're not going to get dramas about doctors. And even if you do get dramas about doctors, their occupation are not going to make any difference whatsoever. I'm planning to dedicate it one video just specifically for Malay dramas but I'm just going to talk briefly about the dramas that I have been following uh, I watch Meloruto Fridaos surprise surprise because I'm a simple girl I see a cute guy in a poster and I watch that drama it tells the story of Melor who is suffering from a terminal illness and she was uh, in the middle of depression until one day she is reunited again with her childhood crush Firdaus. And because she wants to live her days in happiness, Malor decides to marry Firdaus. The problem right now is that Firdaus is already in a committed relationship with his girlfriend, D. In many ways, this drama is, follows like the typical Malay drama formula. You have the cookie cutter, beautiful, nice Malay girl. And then you have the devil may care, hot, rich guy uh, in Firdaus. And also you have the bitchy second female lead, Right now, the question is, do I watch Malur into a Fredos ironically or unironically? Ironically. Because I cannot stand Fredos as a character. The reason why I got interested in this drama in the first place wasn't actually because of Mirchi. It's actually because I, I noticed that this drama has gained international fandom. I ended up having a good time in the first few episodes because I like uh, the character Malur. Malur is a very charming girl as a as every Malay drama heroines always are. But the only difference here is that Malor is proactively pursuing her husband. And we always see that in dramas, whether it's Korean dramas or um, other dramas in general, it's mostly the guys that do the pursuing. And it is quite rare that you see a girl pursuing the guy. And in this case, it is Malor that is pursuing her husband. I just wish I had a boss to pursue a guy that I actually like. Uh, being an introvert is not easy when you're interested in someone, you just don't have the courage to pursue it. In a way, I watch this um, unironically in a way that I live vicariously through Malor. But I also watch it ironically because I am actively criticizing the treatment that Malor received throughout the story. By Malay drama standards, it's actually pretty decent. But Malor also has someone else. Malor has a friend whom she already friends on. Uh, named Haris. The difference here between Haris and D is that Haris respects Malor's decision. Even though he knows that he might never get her, 
he's there as her emotional support and is constantly making sure that he will not ruin Milo and Fridaw's marriage. Tak aku akan tetap kisah pasal masalah dia sebab dia kawan baik aku. Ya, kesian dekat engkau tak ada orang kisah dengan engkau. Sebab tu engkau pergi sana sini untuk grasp people attention. So, kalau tak ada benda baik kau nak cakap, baik kau belah. Whereas D is actively still in a relationship with Firdaus without caring that this might hurt her. Why would I care about her? Because I care about her! Morning, noon and night I care about her! And you hurt her. And if you hurt her, you hurt me. Can you please stop dengan ayat-ayat cinta awak? Orang yang saya cinta adalah orang yang awak luka kan? Dan bila dia terluka, hati saya sakit. Alright? So please. Abang, benda dah settle dah. Buat apa nak stress dengan semua benda ni? Saya stress sebab saya dah lama tak keluar macam dia macam dulu-dulu. Tolonglah faham! The thing that is interesting is how misogynistic Verdals is and how much double standard that he has. But the beauty of Melur de Fidaos is that these double standards are being called out. Fidaos has a close friend named Raikal and Raikal is like of course on Melur's team and Raikal is constantly like, bro, you're not okay with your wife hanging out with Haris. But what makes you think that your wife is okay with you hanging out with your ex-girlfriend? And this is like about Fidaos' character development in him slowly realizing the error of his ways. If you put it in context, he's actually a product of his own upbringing. His father was extremely misogynistic. He also ignores the concerns of domestic abuse of his daughter. It was definitely messed up. For me, yeah, the, uh, Fido's dad is the kind of father-in-law that you really, really don't want to have. The story is still ongoing and I'm kind of curious how it's gonna end even though I've seen some spoilers. Honestly, I don't think Malay drama writers have the balls to give the story a sad ending. I mean, considering Malor has a terminal disease, I mean, it is only logical for it to end with her death. However, I just like, I don't I don't believe Malay drama writers have the balls to to, to, to kill a Malor off, honestly. Considering that uh, Anna Jobling did actually did a great job with her character. She's cute and charming. I don't know, only time will tell. Another drama that I followed is also very, um, I say it's very different. It's messed up, but at the same time, it's it makes up for its messed upness with its ending, which is Bisi Bisi Glory. Initially, I wasn't very interested in watching Bisi Bisi Glory because well, um, I'm not really a fan of Reza Rosli. I mean, somehow his dramas, the dramas that he makes never really resonates with me. But this is the first time I was like, okay, I'm on board with this. Also, another reason why I finally decided to watch Visi Visi Gulura and I watched it as it's close to ending and I could binge the whole thing was that I have read this novel. And this was based on the novel by Fawaziah Ash'ari. I don't really remember what happened in the original novel, but I really like the ending that they give to the story. So Visi Visi Glory is about uh, Arumi, who is a wild child of the city. And then she was being sent to her grandmother's house in the village, you know, for like, kind of like, uh, for some time off or something. And then at the village, she met uh, Jack. And Jack is somewhat of a wild card in the village. But then an unfortunate is that it happened. Jack and his friend was in the middle of robbing Arumi's grandmother's house. But then Jack was sabotaged by his friend, so Jack and Arumi ended up in the The beginning was really, really brutal. Uh, so Jack and Arumi was forced to get married. On their wedding day, uh, Jack was arrested because of the burglary. Arumi went off to study overseas and Jad had to uh, stay in prison. And then years later, they meet again. And Arumi absolutely detest Jad and they both like start off on the wrong foot. They both absolutely detest each other. But then uh, uh, Jad decided that he wanted to make it up to her. And they both actually start to have a good relationship together. They both end up falling in love, consummating the marriage and everything. But then uh, another, this guy that has been like obsessed with Arumi, it's like sabotaging her life. And then it's to the point where when Arumi gets pregnant, Jad does not believe that the baby is 
his. And so thus begin the part, the most messed up part of the story. Their relationship becomes very, very toxic and very, very abusive. Especially since, well, number one, because well, Jack did not believe that the baby that Arumi is carrying is his. So, but he also is too proud to let her go. He just wants to torture her. And so he does for four years. Four freaking years, she lived in a domestic violent household. Now, throughout the flashback that they show, because they immediately fast forward to her giving birth and to her child and being four years old, they actually just show that, well, he wasn't being handsy towards her, he didn't physically hurt her in any way, but what he did, all the yelling and the screaming, that is not a healthy environment for a child to grow. You must be wondering, like, oh, why doesn't Arumi left him or something? Like, I mean, like, who would want to live with a husband like that? She really has nowhere to go. And so, because of that, since Jad is like very, very has this resentment towards her, Jet ended up treating her like a literal housemaid in the house and was absolutely terrible to the kid. And I was thinking like, if they give the story a happy ending, I'm gonna lose my mind because this is one of the stories that you really shouldn't give a happy ending considering how messed up the way Jet treats her. And like, how stupid can you be not to get a DNA test? If I'm not mistaken, like you can get a DNA test up until I think the the third month or the fourth month of the pregnancy because he was so caught up in his own ass that he's like why aren't you doing the dna test why what was the reason what, what, was, the reason? Reason. what was the reason what was the reason what was the reason i just explained the reason what was the reason oh my god it was it felt it felt really stupid and painful initially i thought that you know they were going to give a cookie cutter uh, typical Malay drama ending where they both live happily ever after. Arumi forgets all of the things that he has done to her and everything. But no, I was pleasantly surprised with the ending. I actually really like the fact that they ended up making Arumi leave Chad. After he done the DNA test, you know, he started to treat Arumi better, he's apologized to her and everything. And then Jed was like, I wanted you to be my, uh, it's like, I want us to be happy together, and then he was about to give her a gift. And then Arumi begins to remove all of the mean shit that he has done to her, and she's like, no. And the story ends. Yes, I already mentioned I absolutely like this ending, but there's a downside. My problem with this is that it sort of feel like it comes out of left field. It felt as if, all right, we have written a happy ending, but then when they read like the audience comments about how messed up Jeff treatment towards Arumi, they'd be like, you know what, I changed my mind. Let's just reshoot this ending and we just tack it on. Yeah, because that's exactly how it felt like to me. From some point, from episode 20 something, until the moment when she decides to like leave him, you can tell that she's already forgiven him. Like, they are actually happy together. Jad has already asked for forgiveness and be like, um, and she was like, you know what, I just want to move on. I just want to focus on our family. Like, it's fine. Everything is great. Even though I wanted them to break up, I was thinking, okay, this is going to lead to a cookie cutter happy ending, which I don't think is bad because I'm also a firm believer that people deserve to take a chance. I just feel like they should have made Arumi wrestle with the decision. Place. Do I want to leave Jack or do I want to stay with him? Because we never see her having that inner conflict. Otherwise, I was happy with the ending. I consider it as a, a step up. But also, I uh, just want to point out the reason why I enjoyed Miss Missy Gloria was the cinematography, the color grading, uh, the strategically placed slow mo. I thought it, the story looked good. So, yeah, those are the two Malay dramas that I followed. Do you guys follow any of these two dramas? Let me know your thoughts. Next topic. I finally read a book that I have shelved for 11 years. 11 years I shelved this book. And I was like, why haven't I read you sooner? And that book is Make Habit, Hands on Fire. Based on the language, it feels middle grade. And the length also, it feels middle grade. But I would like to think that this book is actually YA. This story is about a girl named Katie Ellison who is juggling two relationships at a time having an affair with another boy behind her boyfriend's back because she felt like she wasn't emotionally fulfilled in that relationship. A third boy whom she almost forgot returned to town, which is Tommy Sullivan. So Tommy Sullivan is this boy that used to be her friend uh, years ago. And he was uh, driven out of town due to an incident 
that involves a sports team. Tommy apparently stumbles upon her having an affair with this other boy. And so she's worried that Tommy is might out there trying to get revenge on her. I finished this book in one sitting. And I was surprised that why didn't I finish this book in one sitting earlier? It's because I was like questioning my cabinet. Like why am I supposed to root for Katie? Because you know she is clearly not a good girlfriend. Like why the hell would you do that? But then as I story progresses, I like Katie. I actually do. I think she is interesting. And that also Tommy is hot. So anyway, uh, the thing that I like about this book is how it tackles some really serious issues in here that I did not see in other Macabre books. Granted that the only books that I read from Macabre are the Princess Diary series and also the um, Underworld trilogy, which I enjoy. I'm surprised that Macabre was able to talk about really heavy issues in this book without using, without resorting to graphic language. It is heavily implied when Tommy was driven out of town years before, uh, years ago, that he almost died. And also how the whole town is like going against him because he was a, he was kind of a journalist, the writer for uh, the town's the school newspaper, and he was trying to expose the uh, illegal acts of the school sports team. And rightfully so, he had, it was definitely unfair. But then the town was like, no way, how dare this boy write slander about our beloved sports team and everyone beats him up and everything. I thought that it was, it was dark. It really was. And then it also talks about how people can worship some people in such a cult way, in such this mob mentality that people have on the people that they worship. People think that these sports teams are such superior people that they are so superior that they are untouchable even when Katie's brother make it to the sports team he was like yeah everyone is better than us you have to respect me right now i am the star i'm the celebrity it was honestly very dark and very creepy in that scene and i was surprised that it was in this book because this book was supposed to be very lighthearted and cutesy i'm surprised that Mac habit was able to cover a bunch of these issues, including how far people would go to cover up the corruptions of the people on top, I thought it was, it was insane. I think that the way that um, McCabot wants to avoid using, uh, say, unsavory words or like, you know, swear words in, the, in this book is masterful because Katie's character is like, is running for pageant in this book and then, you know, she's like, oh, I'm thinking of a lot of things right now and the thing that I'm thinking about him for is definitely not something that a pageant girl is supposed to say. I think it was very smart. She avoided using bad words through that. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, I think this is a great way to educate young people in like the spoils and the corruptions that you're gonna face in the future. And also definitely escapism because uh, well, uh, Tommy and Katie makes a great couple. And the last thing that I want to talk about is one children books that I have recently purchased. A few weeks ago, uh, my friend came into town. I was very stressed that week when she came. Uh, the whole week, I only came home literally just to sleep. And then only to wake up the next morning to go back to the office and repeat that same routine for the whole week. And so when she came, I was like, finally, can we just go somewhere and hang out? And we did. We hang out across the city. We went to bookstores and also went to cafes. We ended up having a digital detox, playing puzzles, painting and everything. It was cool. One of the purchases that I made was of a children's book. This is called Little Ghost Party. The irony here is that this is a children's book and my friend also bought it, but except that she bought it for her nephew and I bought this for myself. It was stupid fun, this book. I'm gonna tell you how are we're gonna play this book. Okay, so this is how you play this book, all right? So it's kind of like you got to move. At first, I think that, oh my god, this book is so dumb. <laughs> but then as I started doing this, I was like, okay, this is actually kind of fun. So you got to move the chain uh, well accordingly. So if you want to make them dance, you want to make the ghost dance. So that's up high. And then down low, to the left, to the right. And then thriller. And then have freestyle. 
there's also like a bunch of other stuff like you have the worms in the back and then you also the cat and then you have the little ghost I think this book is really fun and I'm definitely gonna keep this for my nephew in the meantime I'm gonna use it for my emotional support so yeah me buying children's activity book just to prove that I am not in the most uh, stable mental and emotional condition right now because like I am so so tired why do you think coloring books are coming back for adults so that concludes my rant for uh, the past few months look out for my upcoming videos that I'm gonna edit there will be some that I recorded recently there will be some that I recorded a long time ago so uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one